Hi everyone. Today we're going to continue our investigations on life sciences, living organisms. I received these beautiful flowers the other day and immediately I put them in water so that they would stay alive and keep growing. But you notice I only put the stem, the bottom inside the water, which got me thinking, hmm, I wonder, does my flower need water all over? Or does it only need water at the very tip of the stem? What about the leaves? What about the flowers? Do they need water? How can I tell? Is there an experiment that I could do that will answer my question? Well, what color is my water? It's clear, it's colorless, I can't see it. What if I could see water travel? Is there a way that I could color my water? Food coloring, that's right. What if I added food coloring to my water and then let the flower sit in the water for some time? Then maybe I'd be able to see the water travel up to the different parts of the flower. Let me show you what you'll need for this experiment. For this lab, you will need to provide regular water, five cups or containers, and food coloring. I'm using blue, yellow, red, and green. You can use any colors that you have in your home. And you will also need five stems of a white flower. The first thing I need to do is add five milliliters of water to each cup. I'm going to take my syringe, insert the tip into the water, and I'm going to add five milliliters to each of my containers. Now that I've done that, the first cup is only going to get water, no food coloring. And that is as a control, just to make sure nothing funny is happening. Then I'm going to add 10 drops of food coloring to each of my containers. The next thing I'm going to do is add one flower to each cup, making sure it's inserted into the water or the food colored water. And next we just wait. I am going to wait about 45 minutes to an hour and then we will come and observe our flowers again. I have actually waited about 24 hours and let's look at our flowers. The one that was in clear water stayed completely white, no difference here. The one in the green, let's look at that. Our petals are green. The one with the red, well, some of the petals turned red, but not all of them. This one, for some reason, didn't work as well. The yellow one looks great. Look at all my yellow petals. And the blue. Look at that. Let's go over what we did here. We had a question. We wanted to see do all parts of the flower need water or is it only at the bottom of the stem? 
we put a little bit of water in the bottom of the cup and added different colors of food coloring just so we could see the water. And we waited about 24 hours and look at what we see. The colors of the petals changed. Blue, yellow, red, and green. And this one stayed white, of course, because there was no food coloring. That water travels all the way up the stem through all the parts of the flower. Amazing, right? Well, I took it a step further and decided to try a very, very long stem. And I put one stem holding many different flowers inside and look at that. The water traveled all the way up the stems through the leaves, even though they were so much further. Now the ones that worked the best were the blue and the green. Look at how colorful my flowers are. Amazing. Now my plants, they need water and they need water all over. How do they get that water? Well, they get it through the roots, through the bottom of the stem. And that water travels all the way up to the tip of the leaves all over. Amazing. So cool. Go ahead and try this with any colors you may have and make sure the flowers are white. Do you think this experiment would work with red flowers or purple flowers? What do you think? Go ahead and try it. Have fun. Now that we see that water travels up through the flower to all parts of the flower, let's do another experiment that explains to us how this happens. It's a process called capillary action. Let me show you what you'll need for this part of the lab. For this part of the lab, you will need to provide a large container it can be glass, metal, or plastic, as long as it is big enough. You will need a pair of scissors. You will need a pencil, water, and a few pieces of construction paper. Any color will do. The first thing you're going to do is draw a flower onto this construction paper. We're gonna start off with one big circle in the middle and four petals all around. It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. Do this four more times. Now that I have my flowers drawn onto my construction paper, using scissors, I'm going to carefully cut around the petals. Next, you're going to take the petals and just fold them in towards the center. Next, I'm going to take my water, pour it into my deep dish container, and drop my petals in, drop my flowers in, and let's watch and see what happens.
Well, look at our little flowers now. They were all closed up, but they opened their petals. If we take a look at the back, we'll see that it's all wet. And what the water does is that it travels and spreads through all the parts, causing the folds to open. Now what we had here obviously are not real flowers and they're not real plants and they're not alive. Just a model to show us how water travels up a plant. Plants have tiny little tubes like tiny little straws called xylem. And the xylem is able to suck up the water just like a straw does and take it all through the plant all the way to the leaves and the flower petals like we just saw. Go ahead, try this at home and have lots of fun.